This past week was a difficult one because we ended up losing two incredible people in the wrestling sphere. That, of course, being Terry Funk and Wyndham Rotunda, once again known to folks as Bray Wyatt in the WWE. First off, for Terry Funk, who we lost earlier in the week. Terry was quite interesting. I got to acknowledge and kind of see the latter portion of his career. One of my very first memories of Terry Funk was, oddly enough, because I had access to it, uh, was Shotgun Saturday Night, which is inadvertently the night before the 1997 Royal Rumble. They had the show live from a bar in Texas because the Royal Rumble was at the Alamo Dome. And there was an interaction, an interview with Terry Funk, and Stone Cold Steve Austin was on commentary. And lo and behold, they get into a scuffle, they get into a brawl. So that was my first impressions of Terry Funk proper, the sort of middle-aged and crazy wild man version, if you will. And it was one of those, the first time I saw that was just very enthralled and kind of taken aback. I'm like, very early on in my wrestling watching days is something I just, I don't know, I really didn't see before and I was kind of hooked. And then he, if I'm not mistaken, he's wearing the, the Funk U t-shirt and then we would later find out in like the WWF Attitude Era that some of the guys like the Hardys and uh, a few others actually trained at the Funking Dojo uh, with him and Dory. So it was kind of one of those weird things. So that was kind of my, my, my first impressions of seeing that. Also as a caveat, because I was raised in the Northeast, I'm originally from New York City, New York. And of course, at 2 or 3 a.m. on a Friday or Saturday night, we used to get ECW Hardcore Television on the MSG Network. And it was one of those where I'd see highlights and recaps featuring Terry Funk. Uh, of course, he was a staple of the earlier portion of ECW when they were Eastern Championship Wrestling. And of course, into roughly that time, 1997, which I quoted earlier, uh, where he was featured in the main event of the ECW's first pay-per-view, Barely Legal. So I kind of remember some of those things as well. Of course, kind of seeing highlights in those those guerrilla style ads of uh, see Terry Funk face this guy and all these kind of things. So it was kind of uh, I got to know and be familiar with him from those things. Uh, and then, of course, when he spent some time in WWF, uh, appearing as Chainsaw Charlie, teaming with Mick Foley as Cactus Jack, facing the New Age Outlaws were were some fond memories of him. And then, of course, uh, just. Later on, I think it was released in around 1998, but the Beyond the Mat documentary, which featured Terry and uh, Mick and Bret Hart, of course, during uh, roughly 1997, that whole calendar year. But remember him featured prominently in that. So uh, those were some of my things that I remembered the most or the impressions that, once again, just really had me drawn to this this person, this character that of this this wild man, middle aged and crazy was the tagline, and just had me really enthralled about what is going on with this guy. So I ended up looking into a bit more of him later on. So those are some of my kind of initial and and, and most remembered memories of of Terry Funk. There, Joker for yourself. You stated before you didn't get a ton of territory or kind of maybe some WCW or things like that. Um, what, what were some of your impressions or, uh, or, or things that you remembered of Terry Funk? My, my, my impressions, my, my history with Terry Funk is very limited. Um, I'm not about to sit here and tell you, Oh yeah, I remember all this crazy stuff that Terry Funk did. Um, it was anything during the attitude era, uh, where Mick Foley was involved. Um, I heard the name Terry Funk thrown around as if he was some sort of mythical being. You know, everybody was training with Terry Funk. Everybody who knew him was like, oh, this hardcore legend, Terry Funk. That's the era that I knew of him. I never knew, I never watched any of his stuff. I never was, was fairly interested in the hardcore deathmatch style that he became 
sort of synonymous with later on in his career um I, I i didn't really feel like i was connecting with that with that sort of person but whenever we had the mick foley character come out as cactus jack and stuff that was whenever i was introduced to terry funk and um i i always kind of keep those two characters terry funk and and, and cactus jack sort of linked together in my mind because you can't have one without the other um and even you know sort of interviews with mick foley and stuff about how much of an influence terry funk was on him kind of says the same thing so um it is it is a great loss for the people who were heavily influenced and um you know and, and close to the man uh all of these all of these tributes being paid to Terry Funk, I, I don't think have have missed the mark. And and hearing everybody just talk about from the early goings in his career and uh you know winning championships um on the uh, on the in, for the NWA and stuff like that there um and being part of ECW um I I feel like this has been a a man with a long and storied career. And um, yeah, sure. I I feel a little bit, you know, a little bit annoyed that I missed such a, a a great career. But at the same time, I'm I'm glad that he has had that and that he's touched so many people. Yeah, it's incredible to think that the impact that Terry has had. I mean, back in the uh, '70s with just the NWA, he was the NWA World Champion in the in the. 80s you'd had him feuding with rick flair and jim crockett promotions later wcw you had him i mean go on to iwa and the king of the death matches and then to ecw and to wwf and then once again back to wcw to uh t and nwa tna impact i mean this guy was really all over the map and like you said touched so many lives and like you said he heard so many fantastic tributes to Terry himself with incredible just words of encouragement and and everything. So it was it was great to hear. I'm remembering from the Beyond the Mat documentary. It's one of those things that he was featured, and this is around 1997. And he's just in incredible amounts of pain. It's hard to get out of bed, and it's one of those like I for some of the folks that have been with us for a while no like i have headaches every day and you know i kind of have knee and and uh, back pain and stuff um so it was one of those i kind of uh, akin to him and kind of sort of a sacred uh bonded soul with him but he was always one that made sure he got up to train he made the towns he made the matches he was always willing to talk to the young guys and and, and pass on that knowledge so it was something that i kind of took to heart e- you know even if you're having a rough go of it you can still share and and be a good influence on the companies and the people around you as a whole and uh, one last note on terry for sure i'm reminded from that same documentary beyond the mat paul Heyman's giving a speech just before barely legal their first pay-per-view goes live and he's talking to the roster and i made sure to get the quote because it's fantastic paul Heyman goes on to say Thank you, Terry Funk, for all he's done for this company, for helping put us on the map, for being unselfish in selfish times, for taking the young guys and showing them a better way. So just a fantastic just quote and appreciative of that. So Terry, thank you for all the memories and for what you've shared with us, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much, Terry. And also for Wyndham Rotunda. Uh, known to many as a Bray Wyatt we lost as well this week. Uh, Joker, what were some things that you remember or uh, the impressions that Wyndham might have had on you? This, this, this one stung a bit more. Um, I woke up to messages from one of my friends who is a, is, is a big fan of wrestling. And he messaged me saying, Bray Wyatt has passed. Um, and I, I was up early. I was going to the gym and I got this message. I just got up in. I, I just looked at it and went, ah, sorry, wait, what? Um, quickly, you know, doing a Google at 6 30 in the morning. Um, and, and yeah, I, 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 I couldn't get it out of my head. Like 
all day. Um, I was I was just trying to think of everything that that sort of um, Bray Wyatt Wyndham Rotunda um, had had done for the wrestling sphere um, in his short but very influential career. Um, and for me personally, uh, I I can't but echo all the sentiments that that have come before and and the tweets and, and the stories from his friends and family he was so integral to the storylines of a lot of people um he came up with such fascinating concepts and just the 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 sort of eater of worlds concept the 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 sort of by you this this sort of cult leader in the Hawaiian shirt, the hat with the black sheep, the white sheep, with 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 um with his sort of family, the storylines that he had with Brian Danielson, with Randy Orton, with absolutely everybody, you know, the, the Undertaker, whoever you want. And then there, there's so much that that man kind of brought to WWE in terms of stories that made some of them didn't make much sense. I'm not gonna lie, he didn't. He didn't for me. He didn't hit home runs all the time, but there was some that he really, really did uh, such an amazing job with, and he brought this sort of. Uh, new vibe with him doing the sort of crab walk, the spider walk that he did, you know, lifting himself up in the ring. Sister Abigail, I think uh, a lot of us have seen his tag match with Roman Reigns where uh, he's pinning and he just puts his arm out in a fashion and you know pulls the trigger and Roman is, you know, in the middle of spearing Sheamus. I think we've all seen that in the last couple, like, months if not a couple of days because it's it's one of his his ring presence his storytelling within the ring his his just general presence was creepy it was encompassing of everyone even if you didn't want to like him you watched a Bray Wyatt match and then you know later on it became the fiend and the Saturday morning sort of cartoon show host, which personally I I really loved. I thought that this dual personality of of Bray was so funny. It was he was having so much fun with one personality, and then he could be serious horror with the other, and it was just so much fun to watch to see when the fiend would pop. You know why we were having this, you know, Saturday morning cartoon show host who was sort of dark sometimes. His his ability to sign up, sort of switch, sw- uh, you know, switch on a dime was was second to none. I feel like his promo ability was the best out of everyone, and everything he did from that cult leader to the eater of worlds to the deleter of worlds with Matt Hardy to this, the fiend thing that he had. Um, it was so good. It encompassed so many amazing talent throughout his career. You know, there was, there was a, a sort of interaction where it was Finn Balor, Seth Rollins and Jeff Hardy walking to the ring and they pass by Matt Hardy and uh, and Bray Wyatt, and they're having this conversation, and you can just watch the free flowing minds of these three individuals just throw out such random things, and everybody to be enthralled by it, and then it just pans back to Seth and Finn going, "What was that about?" Like. It was just such a an innocuous little thing that came up on my feed the other day that I went, that was just so good. That was quintessential Bray. Like, that was such a fun thing to happen. And to lose someone like that, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's difficult, especially considering he's the same age as me, 36 years of age, 
you, you begin to look at your own mortality and he leaves behind a family, a very young family. And um, yeah, it was, it's, it's, a, it's a big loss for the wrestling world, but an even bigger loss for, uh, for the Rotunda family. Absolutely. I mean, I could go on at length to echo a lot of the sentiments there. It's Wyndham himself was just so captivating, I think is, is an apropos word. He just, he, very good. Yeah. He brought bringing a different perspective and different presence to a lot of what he did, pretty much everything he did. I mean, this guy was different with promos, with his look, with vignettes that he was a part of, the, the matches themselves, the moves, the, the presentation, the creativity. Everything about this guy was different, and different in a good way. In a sport where you want to stand out, you want to set yourself apart from your peers in terms of an entertainment aspect to sort of rise above. This guy just, man, was hitting on all cylinders. I think early on in his career, they used to call him the tank with a Ferrari engine. And this guy was just built different in so many aspects of, of his life. So, I mean, he absolutely showed that you don't have to be the ideal kind of cookie cutter mold to be successful. And I think that's, that's one of the, the greatest kind of things that you can be an individual and stand out and, and be successful. And I think that's a message for, you know, for myself, for you, for a lot of, for a lot of folks out there. And like you said, you heard all these great tributes uh, to him. I think it's one of those, I ended up being so captivated. I, I got one of his t-shirts and I'm not a guy who buys wrestling t-shirts, but I, I ended up picking up one cause it was just, something about his presence and the cool design or something different. And it was one of those where, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know it's a wrestling t-shirt, but if somebody gives you that look and you're like, if you know, you know, and it's kind of cool like that. So he was, you know, incredible in the fact that he was such a unique person that even though he was like a multiple time champion, he didn't need a title to make him an attraction or to make him special. He was one that sort of stood out completely by himself. And you can't say that a lot about folks in this industry, excuse me. So once again, just one of those that I can go on for hours about him. But yeah, it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. And like, like you said, he's just a hair younger than I am. So it was one of those things that with the sudden loss, it, it really stung and, and, makes you makes you think and you know if uh, if you have an opportunity if you're watching or listening tell someone you love them give someone a hug you know just just do that and uh yeah so you can you can show somebody that you appreciate them and and just let them know appreciate everybody sharing all their thoughts and uh, impressions and all the kind words on uh, on youtube on Twitter, Instagram, on TikTok, all the uh, the nice comments and everything from there. So one last time, thank you so much, Terry. Thank you so much, Wyndham, for everything that you gave. We appreciate you. Uh, hopefully you're having a phenomenal battle royal in the sky with Brody, with Jay, with Draws, with everybody up there. So thank you. Enjoy yourself. Hopefully we're going to make you proud. So thank you so much. Thank you.